The COB is brought to you by Pepperstone, trusted by traders in over 160 countries. From Barangaroo Studios, here's what you need to know about the day in business and finance. Hello, hello. It's great to be here with you yes. and you all. Um, you're tuning in just as we get to the last of the day's trades going through the S&P ASX 200, but it's been a positive one, Julia. It has. I think every sector is up apart from a little bit of a dip in consumer mm -hmm. staples. So a very good day, four tenths of 1% on the SIBO, similar gain on the ASX 200, which is holding around 7,815 points. A lot of positive momentum coming through today in um, a raft of sectors, but IT, REITs, financial, energy stocks all looking really good. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll talk about it, no doubt. Rates, expectations there. <laughs> but we we also have, you know, most Asian markets higher as well. I was looking at a headline. I mean, the Japanese market is up by 1.6%. At one point, it was up by more than 2%. You've got um, a little bit of pressure, though, coming through in mainland China, Hong Kong as well. Um, but gold, gold is trending. Yeah, absolutely. Gold is glistening, so to speak. This commodities climb, it's been really interesting as well when you start to see so many people try to correlate Bitcoin and gold and the fact that gold is rallying at this momentum and potentially outshining some of the other moves that we're seeing. Yeah, copper is also doing well. I think it's worthwhile mentioning. And of course, a lot of the price action, particularly in this interest rate sensitive areas of the market, can be traced back to Jerome Powell and what he was talking about overnight, um, because you know, it still looks as if we're going to be getting some sort of cut, obviously very, very data dependent. And um, we'll detail it later this half hour, Juliet, but we've got a whole host of other Fed speakers out tonight talking about what else but rates. But rates indeed, and worth noting, which I forgot to mention, gold was a record high and copper there at that 52 week high as well. Let's get into some of the corporate um, news. Suncorp's shares are pretty flat there. It's planning to, or it is selling its New Zealand life insurance business for 410 million Kiwi dollars. Yeah, cochlear. So the ACCC has given the green light to its acquisition of Octacon. Um, so it looks as if that's all going to go ahead. Uh, pretty good day for Boral, I guess underperforming the broader market, but an independent expert, Juliet, said that Seven's bid for the company was unreasonable. And of course, Seven has hit back saying that is not a great uh, independent report. Mm. No big surprise there. Amusion, meanwhile, um, it's been granted a patent for one of its virotherapies. It shares pretty unchanged today. And Lenlease, this was really interesting. I got a text this morning to, mm -hmm. to check my emails about this. And of course, it hit all of the media um, this morning. John Wiley from Tanara Capital, the biggest shareholder, I think they own it about three and a half percent, or one of the big shareholders, urging Lenlease to fix their quote. And this is their quote, arrogant culture. Yeah, we want to be clear on that one. So I chose that. That Juliet is the stock of the day. Um, interesting day to do so, of course, with rates on the agenda. But I caught up with Grady Wolf from Bell Direct and Howard Coleman from Team Invest to ask what they thought about Lend Lease specifically. And this has been a terrible capital killer. You know, I mean, to take your company from earning $1.43 a share to earning 10 cents a share on a steady downward path over 10 years, that's really disastrous. So, I mean, I totally agree with what John Wiley said. The only thing I'm amazed at is that uh, they say these things trying to change the company. Why don't they just take the investor's money and put it somewhere else, um, which is the advantage you have as an individual investor or a fund that doesn't have that sort of a mandate. It's one that I would personally, like Howard, avoid. Um, it's looking at their past results in the first half. They lost, they actually dropped 16% in share price in one day. That was on the back of reporting a $136 million loss for the first half and downgrading guidance, which in this sector, in such a time when there is a serious opportunity, they could really capitalise on this, but they haven't. And so what a lot of the commentary is saying and the market thinks about the company is they're good at putting money into projects, but not great at getting it out. So so they do have their investor day and strategic investor day in May and so we'll definitely keep an eye out for that one and see what the update is there if any and what the strategic review that those words we hate seeing coming out of a company but for something like Lendlease it's something that you want to kind of hear so we'll see what May holds for the company but for me it's an avoid at the moment just because its first half results weren't great and for us in the REIT sector it's Goodman Group is the word at the moment. Okay.
All right, well, let's have a look at the REITs because interest rate sensitive sectors are doing well today. You can see Goodman Group, Dexas, Mervac, all looking pretty positive there. Yeah, so both of them had Goodman Group as their buy in the space. And then we went on to speak about Brickworks and both of them liking the company, thinking that it's a little bit expensive, but I don't want to give the whole episode away. You'll have to watch it. There was um, a bit of banter between the two, a dad joke or maybe two. Um, so yeah, worthwhile catching up with that episode of The Call. They love being on together, don't they? Yeah. All right, let's have a look at tech, a big rebound there too. Wise Tech Global looking good, as did Next DC. A little bit of a downward spiral in zero. And uh, elsewhere, Digger Data, two and a half percent almost. Yeah, Megaport looking good there as well. So the banks, we had S&P Global ratings coming out and looking pretty favorably on the financials. NAB was the expectation, exception to the rule. I don't think it's related, but it was also on the call today and both of the guests called it a sell. But to your earlier point, Juliet, it was really just the consumer staples as a sector that did, um, you know, end. I'm just checking whether about they a quarter ended. quarter of 1%. Oh, no, oh, they've actually, gone into the green. Yeah, turned okay. around. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was a pretty good day, but you can see there those three majors coming under a bit of pressure. All right, welcome to the COB, Henry Jennings from Marcus today. Henry, we're looking at this uh, rally in some of the commodities. Copper, this 52-week high, what's catching your eye? Well, I guess, uh, hi girls, uh, hi Juliet, hi Nadine. It is. Uh, it has been a bit of a resource on risk rally at the moment. We have seen the copper price hitting that 52-week high. There has been some concerns about production cuts coming from Chile. Although I did see February numbers were up 7.7%. So that is uh, boding a little better for production coming out of there. So something to bear in mind is that we've had that terrific run in copper. Uh, of course, it's not easy to get copper exposure in Australia anymore, not pure copper. We used to have Oz Minerals. Now Sandfire is the one. So that's where uh, money has been flocking to. We've also seen gold as well in uh, focus and copper does tend to go along with gold as well. So it's it's been an interesting uh, piece of uh, rallying in the market, to say the least. And we've also seen silver. Uh, there's not many silver companies either out there, but uh, there's one or two silver mines. Obviously, the name says it all. And Boab Minerals, which uh, Shore and Partners had as a buy, and we wrote up this morning, that's up 18% as well. So things looking pretty good in some of these commodities. Lithium as well today, uh, having a bit of a renaissance. Whether it will last remains to be seen. But uh, at the moment, most commodities, bar iron ore, are doing pretty well. You've got oil doing well, you've got copper, you've got uh, even coffee and cocoa doing mm. very well. So that, that is, unfortunately, does feed into the whole inflationary argument as well. So we do have to be a little bit careful because all these raw material inputs do stoke inflation. So something to bear in mind. Okay, so when you are looking around this market, given the performance that we've seen so far this year, despite you know a little bit of a wobble, I suppose you could say, to start the shortened trading week, um, yeah. where are you seeking out? Like, where are you spending your time doing your research, Henry? Uh, well, I think for me, it's still uh, in the resource stocks. I have to say, looking at some of those uh, stocks that are really fallen off people's radars, that maybe have been uh, pushed down too low. We've seen it in some of these stocks have had meteoric rises. Something like AWC, which of course is under takeover from Alcoa. But barring that, I mean, Alcoa has been going like a train and AWC has rallied from 70 cents. It's pretty much doubled in the last month or so. So there are certainly some interesting uh, resource stocks out there. And I think that's where we should be hunting for, uh, for bargains. The bank sector has run, that's done its dash. We've got results pending. Uh, REITs obviously uh, are pretty uh, optimistic about rate cuts, so they've come and go. And the technology sector, well, unfortunately, we don't have that great a technology sector in Australia. And the industrials, well, it's, uh, it's hard to get excited about uh, the likes of Telstra, etc. So I think really for me at the moment, it is in resources. Uh, whether that's lithium or whether it's in some of the gold stocks that haven't really run. DeGray's having a good day today. That's one of the ones I do like. Uh, and also, of course, in those copper stocks, trying to find that copper exposure that we used to have from Oz Minerals and Barring Samphire, which has had an almighty run as well. But I think that's where uh, I've been looking at the moment is uh, resource space. Henry, when you look at the broader macro picture, I mean, clearly we're not building enough homes, but we are spending, <laughs> no. household spending rising. 
yeah, household spending was okay. I mean, I think you know we, we see in the media a lot of uh, a lot of focus on uh, mortgage stress and young people uh, with their uh, getting into homes, etc., and and taking the RBA at their word a few years ago and locking in big loans at expensive pricing. Uh, the the sleeper, I guess, is that uh, older Australians who don't have a mortgage, don't have borrowings, are getting five percent in the bank. Uh, and clearly, there, you know, you look at the uh, the newspapers at the weekend. There are it's wall to wall cruise advertising. So somebody's got the money, and certainly they are spending it. Housing, I think, was the worst number they NAB was saying since 2013. So we have this massive kind of inflationary impact of rents going up, house prices going up, because we're just not building enough houses or any kind of accommodation, cheap or expensive, uh, for the 500,000 immigrants that are coming to this country uh, in the last year, uh, let alone the ones that are being born and the ones that are maturing. So it is an issue. And, uh, you know, certainly today's numbers suggest that uh, that's not going away anytime soon. We, we've got to solve this housing crisis because my kids are going to struggle forever to uh, to get on the housing ladder so you know mm. it, it's, it's pretty tough as a young person out there i think sure is unless they go of course to the bank of dad because of all your yeah. stock calls over the years henry yeah but yeah. even even the bank of mum and dad i mean the problem yeah. is that unless they've got fantastic jobs and they can service the loan you can you can give them some money and you can give them a helping hand but they've still got to be able to service the loan it's not like you, you know the bank of mum and dad can give the money and service the yeah. loan or Unfortunately, I'm not uh, uh, rich enough to be able to buy them outright. No, well, um, some common sense uh, would prevail there as well, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but it is one of those things, I was reading a UBS report, they expect to still see house prices to rise about 5% this year, but then they say that will likely, or it could, keep the RBA on the sidelines, unable to cut rates because you know we've got these rising house prices mm. still. So a real conundrum that we're in. Um, but yeah. as far as you as an investor, I mean, yeah. I hate to reference reporting season, it's old news, but we're in between yeah. sort of reporting season and kind of confession season, or the Macquarie Conference, if you want to call it, the trading update season, you know, the confession yeah. conference. So where do, we, where do we look as investors? What is the strategy? Is it doing research, bottom up, stock um, fundamentals, you know, listening to programs like Osbiz? Well, I think you've always got to listen to programs like Osbiz. That's compulsory uh, for any investor, really. I guess at the moment we're in that kind of lull. The markets run really hard into Easter. I was always of the view that we would be, uh, well, I'm always kind of fat and happy at Easter. And the market does tend to run in the first quarter. And uh, I tend to go away at Easter with a group of friends. And I'm always sort of looking at the market thinking, oh, no, clever smarty pants because it's gone so well this year. And then things start to fall apart a little bit. They did fall apart a little bit on Monday and uh, rather Tuesday and Wednesday. But we seem to be getting, getting back on a little bit of a firm footing. But we are in a bit of a lull. We've got bank results coming up. As you say, we've got the Macquarie Conference, which is confession season. Then we've got the budget in May. And then, of course, we're getting closer and closer to kind of decision time with the Fed in June, which is very much the firm favourite for the first time they will move. Uh, the RBA, I think, will be cautious as well. We will be talking about interest rates in the Fed all year, I'm sure. Uh, US reporting season kicks off this month as well, so that should uh, give us a little bit of a boost either way. But at the moment, I think it's a little bit of uh, time just to consolidate, catch up on where we were from reporting season, because it does get fast and furious in February and uh, maybe keep an eye out for what's going to happen out of that Macquarie conference, which could get interesting. But for the time being, I think we're in sort of consolidation mode. If, you, if you're climbing mountains and you've just uh, sort of got to camp four and you're going to make another assault on the summit, <laughs> sometimes you have, to, you have to come down every now and then and acclimatize, get your breath back, shelter in the tent, get some more oxygen before you uh, head on up to the summit again. Oxygen, always a wise idea. Henry, thank you so much. Henry Jennings from Marcus today. Let's have a look at the after close winners and losers on the day. Tell us mining leading the board. Lion Town, of course, we've been talking about that. A lot of movement in lithium players today. Yeah, I've got Arcadium Lithium uh, topping the list with Lion Town Resources, South 32 looking good. Illuminous, it's very, very much a commodities story. You've got to go a little bit further down to even get into oil, and that is Karoon. Of course, it's really making a move move more predominantly into the Gulf of Mexico. And then when you get to the laggards, well, IAG, we did see non-bank financials outperforming in March, but coming under pressure here today and Reliance Worldwide, just checking in, 
A uh, little bit of a buyback happening there. I can't see any other significant news. And Block was also one of the worst performers today on no major news. All right, let's have a look at the small end of town. Your time to shine. Well, Dan. I didn't talk about small caps a lot today, but Novinix, uh, we'll be speaking with speak them, to them on next Monday. week. Yeah, yeah. I thought so up by 13%. So again, continuing to make strides in that battery technology area of the market. But um, quite a different story with that 13% gain for Novinix as compared to what you see coming through for Theta Gold Mine. So you know it had to be news related because, you know, gold pretty much across the board yeah. is doing really well today. All right, and legacy iron ore down about 7%. All right, we are looking out for PPI from the Eurozone, the US trade balance, a raft of Fed speakers going to talk as well. We've got Harker, Barkin, Goolsby, Mester, Kashkari, all due to speak as yeah. we continue to wait to see for clues as to when we're going to see a cut from the Fed. It's interesting because I was having a bit of a chat with Mark Bailey from Capstream Capital today, and he was referencing Christopher Kent being out earlier this week saying, ooh, maybe with this new RBA mm. regime, we'll start to hear more from these... Uh, you know, assistant treasurers, maybe they'll be more like the Fed speakers in coming yeah. out and, and actually, you know, speaking their minds mm. um, more so than we do here. And I thought, oh, no, because uh, when we were at that event, he made it very clear that he was not going to be drawn. And it's a little bit macro. different, too, right? Because they're often the state or the district president, yes. too, whereas we really are quite a small little yeah. country, even though we like to think we're big. Um, we, we are punch big above on our weight, though. Yeah, yeah, we do punch above our debate, and we are big on a geographical scale. All right, what's happening tomorrow? Did we have a look at that? Well, Here there's we an AGM oh. happening with Telix, um, trade balance, but look, it's it's about US jobs. That's what yeah. it's about. Yeah. And I had a chat with Carl Rotter. By the way, when we name drop these interviews, you can go online and you can listen to them at osbiz.com.au. You can actually search our expert guests and get all of their previous commentary, but. I digress. Um, Kyle was just and I had a good conversation about you know, the fact that this jobs report, it, it could, you know, upset the apple cart in mm. terms of the rates narrative, because, of course, the jobs market has been so resilient in the States. I mean, we saw that with that jolts job read earlier on in the piece. So very interesting time. Indeed. OK, it is market close on a positive day. Let's have a quick run at the market up four tenths of one percent. Every sector I think we worked out did end in the green today. The ASX 200 up by about half of one percent. IT REITs utilities really leading the gains. The ASX 200 seven thousand eight hundred and 17 points. Yes, yeah, so as we head toward the European Open, the US Open as well, we do have the Aussie dollar rising further. It continued to rise in this Asian session. And looking at e-minis in the US, we've got the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 e-minis looking positive at this time, though lots of water to go under the bridge between now and then. All right, we are looking ahead to the call. I think that's going to be playing after this. We'll say goodbye. We look yeah. forward to seeing you live again tomorrow morning at about Absolutely. 9.45. 940, yeah. yeah, I was uh, talking a lot about the call, so you can, you can watch it next. next. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the last oh, the call. Last call. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter, you can still watch the call next. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. <laughs>